The Expressionist and modern dance movements both sprang up around 1900. Each movement was developed in Europe and America, respectively, and they both came as a protest against the rigidity of ballet in the larger artistic and political atmospheres of the time. In Germany, where the Expressionist movement began, the artists were inspired by the extreme poverty in the country and then by the rise of the harsh Nazi rhetoric. Expressionist dancers felt that ballet was built on superficiality and sought a truer, more natural form of dance. Expressionist dance was only one aspect of the large artistic movement that included filmmakers and painters as well as dancers. German Expressionism was focused highly on the artist's inner feelings and ideas about their surroundings instead of recreating a reality. Expressionist paintings were mostly characterized by bright colors and gestural brushstrokes, while the films from this period were brooding and dark. Many of its most famous works came about after the Great War and during Germany's economic crisis, but prior to World War II. The most famous works from this period were the films Nosferatu, released in 1922, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1920, and Metropolis from 1927. All three of these films are still heralded as genre makers within the horror community. Nosferatu is a vampire tale inspired by Bram Stoker's Dracula, while Dr. Caligari deals with mental illness, murder, and the concept of reality versus perception. The movement would thrive through the 1920s and kind of come to a halt in the 1930s. Expressionist dance began to crumble when the designation Expressionist dance was forbidden under the National Socialist regime. The pressures from the Nazi government drove many Expressionist artists into exile, while many more were persecuted. While the modern dance movement in America continued to grow and even gained members from the Expressionist movement, the Expressionists were all but destroyed in Central Europe. The Expressionist dance of Germany was a highly influential branch of the overall movement, and it gave the dance world the likes of Rudolf von Laban, who would go on to create Laban Notation, and choreographer Hanya Holm, who is also known as one of the big four founders of American modern dance. The largest difference between the German Expressionist movement and the modern dance movement were that the Expressionists viewed their work as a movement, and did not seek to create specific techniques based on that work. Instead, they saw dance as a metaphy metaphysical experience above all else. For Dance Germany, writer Hedwig Mueller writes, An abundance of dancers belonged to the dance culture of the 20s, such as the socially critical Valeska Gert or the communist Jean Veit. All had in common the striving to bring to Expressionism an individual world vision through a dance touching on natural bodily movement. And this is where Mary Wigman comes in. Mary Wigman was born in 1886, and she died in 1973, and she was one of the most influential German Expressionist choreographers of the pre-World War II era. Her influence can still be seen in pieces such as Pina Bausch's Recreation of the Rite of Spring from 1975. She was also a student of Rudolf von Laban and Emile Jacques Delcroix um, before composing her own work. The Encyclopedia Britannica says of Wigman, her impact on dance throughout Central Europe changed the course of dance history. Her pupils, numbering thousands, included Harold Kreutzberg, Ivan Georgi, Margareth Vollmann, and Hanya Holm, the latter two exerting major influences on the development of American modern dance. Wigman's most famous dance is Hexentanz, or Witch Dance. This piece was composed in 1914, but the only surviving footage of it comes from 1930. Here it is.
The piece features Wigman in a mask and a cloak, which serve to create an inhuman, eerie, and almost ethereal body. She sits on the floor for the entirety of the work, and her energy flows out through her hands, upper torso, head, and feet. Her body twitches, and she creates statuesque poses that are reminiscent of the hag of witch lore. In their linked description to this film, MoMA states... This short solo is a masterpiece of strangeness. Wigman aimed for a state of ritualized trance as she danced, summoning up the dangerous spirit of her character, yet the detail and control of her movement is remarkable. Wigman's witch is cousin to the troubled, terrifying spirit of Max Trex Nosferatu, hunching over herself as if drawing dark spells from her own body, then launching into a rocking and lurching trajectory towards her prey. This piece is one of my personal favorites because of its strangeness. It doesn't aim to be something beautiful, but instead something forceful. The image she creates are ones of pain. Her limbs jet out at weird angles and are whipped through the air. It's an enchanting, albeit kind of disturbing, watch. Wigman's work was created in a social and political time of violence, fear, and desperation. Hexentanz was created amidst Germany's horrendous economic crisis that preceded the beginning of dissemination of Nazi rhetoric. The movement of Hexentanz, to me, displays a body at war with itself and mirrors the internal conflict of the maker's country. Her energy punches out through her limbs, only to be pulled back in the last second. Her dehumanized features create a caricature of pain and ecstasy. To the European viewer, of the early 20th century, this must have been an unnerving comparison to ballet. For the modern viewer, it creates a tension between the uncanny valley and what could be a beautiful spectacle. Unfortunately, Wigman herself gave into the darkness of the German political world and became complicit with the Nazi regime. Judith Wellman, in her article for The Guardian on Wigman, says, while her early choreography was not to official taste, she was sufficiently in step with the early Volk-inspired philosophy of the Reich to receive a commission to choreograph a mass Olympic youth dance for the 1936 Berlin Olympic Games. And while she was privately sympathetic to Jewish students and her dress in school, she didn't rebel against orders to remove Jewish dancers from her company. The horror of her dance was reflected within the horrors that were inflicted in the name of the German people, and Mary Wigman did become complicit while others in the movement were forced to flee.